This is Ruth Guthrie presenting a module on issues related to green computing. To tackle this subject, I tried to divide green computing into ideas in two areas, design and technology. Though there's a little overlap and design isn't quite the correct word, this lecture gives you many examples of ideas and technologies that are saving energy and money. Product longevity means that if your product lasts longer and is not thrown away, it's greener because it requires less manufacturing of new items and overall produces less waste. Disposal of toxic waste is important so that people, plants, and animals don't get cancer and problems by exposure to harmful elements. Telecommuting means you can work from home, avoiding using gas and saving time because you don't commute. E-commerce delivery refers to smart routing of trucks to reduce fuel consumption. There are several things you can do in a data center to reduce carbon emissions and costs, such as virtualization. Virtualization means that one server can do many different tasks. Grid computing harnesses the power of many latent, unused computers to take advantage of the processing power for other uses. Lastly, cloud computing means several things, but think of it as outsourcing your data center, the idea being that an external supplier can offer cheaper, greener services than hosting something in-house. Since the supplier is larger and specialized, economies of scale can be achieved that many companies might not be able to do by themselves. Maybe. The two major ways that computer technology has an impact on the environment is e-waste and power consumption. E-waste refers to throwing computer technology away and not disposing of it properly. While it may be safe for us to use, there are still poisonous elements that are contained in your cell phone, your computer, and your old VCR. 2.5 million tons of e-waste ends up in landfills. Only 25% of e-waste is recycled, so the 75% can be leaking dangerous chemicals into the groundwater. The big four chemicals that are always mentioned online are lead, mercury, arsenic, cadmium. Lead was found to be so toxic that the entire paint industry was changed to have non-lead-based paint. Too many children got toxic levels of lead in their blood, and it gave them health problems, particularly brain developmental problems. Mercury exposure can attack your central nervous system and lead to brain damage and death. Increasingly, people are aware of the hazards and dispose of e-waste in a better way. I'm sure you've seen at different high school parking lots and city yards e-waste roundups for exactly this reason. Recycling e-waste has developed into a $5 billion industry. It's great for owners of recycling companies, great for people, and great for the environment. Energy consumption is the next major way that technology affects the environment. Data centers are estimated by the New York Times to waste 90% of the power they use. Think about a giant data center. It was built to be enormous so that when a giant load of traffic needed service, it could handle the requests. However, most of the time traffic is low or moderate. As a result, all the idle equipment is sucking up power in idle but not being used. This is incredibly wasteful. Worldwide data center power use is 30 billion watts. That's such a big figure I can't even imagine what that means. But a single data center typically has more power use than a medium-sized town. Google's data centers consume 300 million watts, while Facebook consumes 60 million watts. Big. So what? Doesn't this mean that data centers just have big electric bills? Well, yes, they do. But energy consumption translates into carbon emissions that are bad for the environment. So, having a more efficient, greener data center can result in less impact to the environment and cost savings. Here is a graph from the World Bank on CO2 emissions per capita. This chart was created using Google Public Data Explorer. The site has several public data sets that you can use and explore with a simple interface. Further, it allows you to see how the data changes over time in an animated way, 
you should try using your Google password and try the public data explorer sometime. I map the CO2 emissions for USA, Canada, Germany, China, Mexico, and Cuba. Remember, these are per capita results. You can see that the U.S. was highest in the 70s and is starting to work its way down. One strategy for greener technology is to design products that last longer. If they last longer, then there isn't so much e-waste being put into landfills. But you know how we love new technology. This chart shows the average cell phone replacement time for different countries. In 2010, the average time to replace a cell phone was 21.7 months in the United States, almost two years. Maybe this has more to do with when your contract is running out and you can qualify for a free phone. In other countries, it can be much longer. Look at the data for Brazil and India. In Brazil, it's over 80 months. Can you imagine owning the same phone for almost seven years? In India, it's almost 94 months. That is a really long time. So think about it. If your DVD player breaks, do you buy a new one? Which would be quick, cheap, and easy. Try to fix it, and you might be successful or you might not. Or C, pay someone to fix it. You would never pay someone to fix it because the cost of buying a new one is cheaper than the cost of having it fixed. Laptop replacement is about every two years, just like cell phones. Server replacement is every four or five years. Perhaps you can remember historically the evolution of what was once called Game Boy. Game Boy was developed in 1989, and soon after came Game Boy Color in 1998, nine years later, Game Boy Advance in 2001, DS in 2004, DS Lite in 2009, and 3DS recently in 2011. You want the latest technology, and the old products are obsolesce very quickly. To add to product longevity, you can have upgradable products or multi-purpose products. The operating system for your phone, your computer, and all your apps are, for the most part, upgradable. So instead of throwing out your device, you can install the upgrade and extend the useful life and functionality of the device. With servers, this is also true. An innovation called virtualization is also helpful. Virtualization means that a single server can run many different environments. Before, a server would be dedicated to one thing. Now, one server can serve many purposes. Back to e-waste for a minute. Five million cell phones were thrown away in 2009. And yes, that phone has toxic materials. The table on the right shows a rating from a study on cell phone toxicity. It's nice to note that new phones are less toxic than the phones from five years ago. Most phones are entirely recyclable. A few more statistics from the EPA FAC on e-waste. For every million cell phones, we recycle 35,000 pounds of copper, 772 pounds of silver, 75 pounds of gold, and 33 pounds of palladium. Recovering materials from used cell phones can reduce extraction of raw materials from the earth. In 2009, discarded TVs, computers, peripherals, including printers, scanners, fax machines, mice, keyboards, and cell phones, totaled about 2.37 million short tons. In 2009, approximately 25% of TVs, computer products, and cell phones that were ready for end-of-life management were collected for recycling. Cell phones were recycled at a rate of approximately 8%. Lead, nickel, cadmium, and mercury could pose risks to human health. So how do you get rid of that old phone? First, the EPA and several others recommend that you make sure your contract is ended and that you clean your phone of any personal data. This is really important from a security and privacy standpoint. You wouldn't want a stranger using your old phone for free, and you certainly wouldn't want them calling your friends or accessing your personal information. 
Then you could consider donating to a worthy cause. Phonesforcharity.org will recycle your phone. Among the charities they support are the American Cancer Society, DARE, and Give to Troops. You could send your phone to sellcell.com. I've never done this, but apparently they give you cash for an old phone. Or for your phones or other e-waste, simply Google e-waste recycling in your local community. I found that I could take my e-waste to Route 66 self-storage on Foothill in Pomona. Usually I just wait for a recycling day at Claremont High School or the LA Fairgrounds. Another thing companies can do to alleviate freeway congestion and pollution caused by cars is to allow employees to telecommute. Telecommuting means that you might work from home or work from a job site close to your house instead of driving to work. The benefit of not having to sit on the freeway during your commute is clear. Some people save as much as three hours a day by not having to drive to work. Studies also show that people can be more productive at home because they can work without interruptions that they would face at the workplace. Usually, telecommuting is possible for employees who have worked for a while and proven their ability to meet their work objectives. But sometimes telecommuting can be isolating and keep a person from being promoted. Not being visible to the office can leave a teleworker out of the corporate culture. To avoid this, many people telework two days a week and then work at the office the other three days. Similarly, teleconferencing can save time and money. If you have to travel to New York for meetings, several hours are wasted during travel time. But if you can video conference and accomplish the quality you need, you save airfare, travel time, and it's better for the environment too. E-commerce delivery. Think about how many packages are delivered each day. If I have Amazon send me a toothbrush, they've got to schedule warehouses, trucks, and people to bring me one small toothbrush. It sounds super inefficient. It can be very inefficient. But computer databases and programs let us take a bigger view. Amazon isn't delivering Ruth Guthrie a toothbrush. They are delivering pots and pans to the Andersons, a soccer jersey to the Browns, and books to Karen Little, et cetera, et cetera. Millions of products. Being able to group the deliveries smartly economizes on the gas, and it also can speed the time to delivery of the toothbrush to my front door. In 2008, UPS changed their delivery routes in a way that you might not think of. They designed their route so that their trucks would turn right whenever possible. Apparently, 7% of the fuel cost for UPS was during idle time spent at red lights and waiting periods. By arranging routes to turn right, much of the idle time was eliminated. Pretty neat. Let's go back to the data center. Simple things that make the data center more efficient are virtualization, cloud computing, cooling design, and power management. We'll discuss virtualization and cloud computing in the next couple of modules. Cooling design refers to managing the temperature in the data center. Many data centers are kept overly cool because that is the traditional way that things are done. It is bad when electronics get hot, so make the data center freezing. In reality, data centers do not need to be that cold. Or the server racks that do need to be cold can be isolated into a smaller area that is easier to cool than a giant room. We used to need enormous rooms for data center computers. Now, an old data center typically has some server racks and a lot of empty space. We don't need to cool that entire space. Water cooling systems and airside economizers that manage airflow into the data center can further help reduce costs. Just like UPS, much of the data center power is used on idling machines. The machines may not be doing anything, but they still use power. Automated power saving can turn off things that are not necessary at that time. With cloud computing, it is a huge selling point to talk about dynamic scaling. You ramp up when necessary, and you don't have idle data center resources being unused. Okay, quiz time. What country has the highest CO2 emissions per capita? USA. What country has the best recycling program in the world? 
It's Switzerland. USA is number seven. I had thought, oh, it's got to be USA, but no, actually, we're number seven. But that's not actually too bad. Does one Google search have a carbon emission? Yes, it does. It uses power, and to create that power, there's a carbon footprint. It's easy to scale your data center, true or false? No, not always. It can be easy, but sometimes these things have to be worked out to a great detail in advance. That's the end.